Fire Phone. Welcome to another one of our NFL team previews. We're going to the NFC North and last year's last place team in that division, the Detroit Lions. Head coach, coach Jim Shorts moves into an, an his fourth season with the team, fifth season with the team. He went 4-12 and last year. The offense is led by quarterback Matthew Stafford, where the concern is not so much if he can stay healthy, because he's done that lately. It's can he improve his play to where it was two seasons ago when he led the Lions to the playoff berth. His touchdowns an interception. His touchdowns were cut in half this past season from where they were in the low 40s, and his completion percentage dropped dramatically. But the good thing is with the Lions, he's always got a big, fast, reliable target in Calvin Johnson, who's just getting better, could break 2,000 yards receiving this year. There's really no corner in the NFL who can cover him. Yes, no Richard Sherman, no Jarrell Revis. You cannot cover Calvin Johnson. He's too big and strong and can just jump over you. The secondary receivers are Nate Burleson and Ryan Broyles. Both are coming off injury shortened seasons that saw them go on IR. Broyles had a big second half when he had a huge game uh, on Thanksgiving. I like him as his future. I think the all-time leading catch, pass catcher from Oklahoma will just continue to improve and be a great man who can work the slot, who can work the middle of the outside, and will be able to give them a good target opposite of Johnson. Moved to tight end where they got a couple good pass catching cat targets, but not guys that you really would say are top 10 players. You got Brian, Ram Pettigrew, who has all the physical gifts in the world, but had the most drops among tight ends last year. And then we go to Tony Sethler, who's a good guy in the, the seam, the guy they got from the Broncos a few years ago. He's been, he's been one of uh, Stafford's their targets. Moved to running back where they signed Reggie Bush from the Dolphins. Bush comes in, he's Never lived up to the hype he did, had coming out of USC, but he's still a great receiving back, which when you consider that Mikel LaShore and Jacques Bell combined for 70 catches, Bush could have a huge year catching the ball. And at the aforementioned Mikel LaShore, his first full season following a Achilles injury that, that he uh, missed his rookie season with, he showed no burst and was, did not appear to be the same player that he was at Illinois. You have to wonder if he's pretty much done as a player and is never going to reach his potential. Um, he didn't have much burst. He only had 3.7 yards of carry and it was good in just short yardage, picking up some touchdowns. Then there was Jacques Bell, who is a good third back. He had a big year. He, he averaged 5 yards of carry and he had 52 catches, so he's a big impact on third down. You have to wonder how they're going to use him going forward. He is a backup for a reason, though. We moved to the offensive line, which is the weakest point of the offense. Riley Reef takes over at left tackle. Replacing longtime starter Jeff Backus, moved to left guard with Rob Sims. He's and Dominic Riola as a starter. They've been starting there for a few years now. We go to the right side where they're leading in guys that don't have much starting experience. Dylan Gandy's been a career backup, while Jason Fox has only played in five games in three years since being drafted in the fourth round from Miami. We move to the defense where it's based around two fantastic defensive tackles, Dominic and Sue and Nick Fairley. Both can have huge impacts in the run game and passing game, so that, that's the, way, the strength of their defense. And then they drafted Ziggy Ansah, fifth overall at a BYU. He's still a raw project, but a physical freak. He could have a big year, but he, again, is very raw, could take him some time to develop. And then they signed Jason Jones and Israel Adonje. Basically, I expect Jones to play the first two downs as more of a run stuffer. He can move in to play some tackle if he's if needed. Well, Adonje is a great special teamer, and he's Developed a bit of a pass rush game. He had eight sacks last year for the Bears. Moved to linebacker, where it's a weak unit. Really, the only dependable guy is Steven Tullock. He's a big, big tackle machine. For an undersized guy, he really gets all over the field. Then you have DeAndre Levy, who's a below average guy. And Ashley Palmer, who started seven games in his career. He takes over for Justin Durant, who left for the Cowboys. I really don't like their linebacking core. It's a weak, the weakness of the team. Moved to the secondary, starting at corner. Chris Houston's back. It's the number one corner. He's not a number one corner, but he's forced into the role on the, of the Lions team. And then they signed Ron Bartel at the end of last season after he was cut by the Raiders. He had a great 20 talent at the Rams, but then injuries derailed them. Neck, knee, everything has gone wrong for him. And he played well at his one game with the Lions. We moved to their the guys who are going to be competing for the nickel and dime rolls. That's Bill Bluntley and Darius Slade. They've been recent high draft picks for the Lions. At strong safety, they signed Gover Clinton. That's an instant upgrade in their secondary from what they had. And then the big question mark is Louis Del Moss' health. If he stays healthy, he's a Pro Bowl caliber free safety, but he's had extraordinary trouble staying on the field, which is really too bad because he's a heck of a player to watch. 
moved to special teams. Well, they're taking a risk on David Akers. They picked him over the Norwegian kicker. But Akers is coming off his career worth season. Only hit 69% of his kicks. He did hit a 63 yard to start the year, but it was down the hill from there with the 49ers last year. It was not very consistent. Moving indoors should help him. They've got rookie punter Sam Martin, so you, you don't know what you're going to get out of rookie special teams players. And then Michael Spurlock is a good return man who will give them good good starting position on all returns. But this team is not improved enough to be a playoff contender. I think they're a last place team in the NFC North. I'm saying 7-10, and, and that's my preview for the Detroit Lions.